Every three to six months, you will have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your boss. The purpose of this one-on-one -on -one meeting is twofold. First, it's for your boss to understand how you are performing and to find out what a great employee you are. And second, it's a way for you to have an uninterrupted conversation with them so you can ask questions and talk through work-related problems. On a higher level, as a professional, it's critical that you have this one-on-one -on -one time with your boss so you can find out what is working and what is not working. Working. But in order to make the most out of it, you need to approach it proactively, which means you need to put in some time to prepare and plan for this one on one meeting. And in this video, I'm going to share with you six steps to help you do exactly that. First, you need to get to know the meeting agenda. If your boss is organized, they will have sent you a meeting agenda for the one on one meeting, either in the calendar invite or by email. Either way, before the one-on-one -on -one meeting, you need to make sure that you read this agenda. So a couple of days before the meeting, spend five to 10 minutes reading the meeting agenda and get to know what you will be talking about in the one-on-one -on -one meeting. And if you don't understand something that is included in the meeting agenda, I want you to mark it. You don't necessarily have to ask your boss about it before the meeting, but mark it so you know that it's something that you want clarification of during that one-on-one -on -one meeting. In preparing the agenda, some managers will ask you for topics that you want to discuss. This is something I actually recommend managers to do when they are preparing for one-on-one -on -one meetings with their employees, because at the end of the day, it's a two-way conversation between the manager and the team member, or the leader and the team member. And you really need to get a lot out of this one-on-one -on -one meeting as well, not just your boss. If your manager has asked you for topics that you would like to discuss, then they've probably included this in the meeting agenda. Now, when you read the meeting agenda, make sure that you take note of when each topic will be discussed so that you don't avoid bringing up a topic too soon or asking a question too soon and derail the rest of the meeting. Second, I recommend that you review your notes from the previous one-on-one -on -one meeting. Look at the action items that you were responsible for. Look at the accountabilities that you needed to achieve or the goals that you needed to achieve. Did you achieve them? If you did, fantastic. If you didn't, try to think of why you didn't achieve them. What came in the way of you achieving those goals? Because these are areas that your boss will definitely ask you about. If you did complete an action item or a meter goal from the previous meeting, then make sure you highlight it in the current one-on-one -on -one meeting that you're having. Talk about it as an achievement or a success that you have had. Make sure your boss knows about it because they may have forgotten that it ever happened. And also get their feedback on your performance in achieving this task and meeting this goal because this helps to reinforce your value as an employee in their mind as well. If you didn't complete an action item or if you didn't meet a goal that you had set in the previous one-on-one -on -one meeting, then try to think about why that happened why didn't you meet that goal? What obstacle got in your way? Was it a short time frame that led you to not complete the task on time? Was it lack of skills that caused you to not have the skill set needed to complete the task successfully? Was it lack of resources that led you to not complete that task? And talk about what you will do to rectify this, meaning what will you do differently next time in order to complete that task successfully? You need to think of your one-on-one -on -one meeting with your boss as a rolling meeting, something that continues from the previous meeting to the current one and then to the next one. And if you think of a topic that you talked about in the previous one-on-one -on -one meeting that you would like to discuss again in this meeting, a follow-on topic, make sure you include it in the list of items that you would like to discuss. This list can include action items following on from the previous one-on-one -on -one meeting, or it can include new items that have arisen since the previous meeting. For example, updates on projects that you are working on, ideas that you want to present, questions you want to ask, challenges you want to talk about, and accomplishments you want your boss to know about. Just so you know, we will be expanding on these last two points later on in this video. Essentially, this is your grand list of items that you want to discuss in your one-on-one -on -one meeting. Simply by making this list, you put thought into the one-on-one -on -one meeting, which helps you get the most out of it. And it also 
makes you look proactive because your boss knows that you are coming prepared. At this point in your one-on-one -on -one meeting preparation, I recommend that you start to record these things in a Google Doc or some other kind of word processing software, because as you will discover at the end of this video, you need to keep smart notes as to what you want to talk about in your one-on-one -on -one meeting. In the last point, I talked about including problems and challenges as a discussion point for the one-on-one -on -one meeting. So let's expand on that now. Since your last one-on-one -on -one meeting, it's likely that you've come across a number of obstacles or problems along the way. They could be large or small. They could be task specific. They could be related to your work. They could be related to workplace interactions with your coworkers, or they could be something else. Given how varied your workday is and given how much time has lapsed since your previous one-on-one -on -one meeting with your boss, it's likely that there is at least one challenge or problem that has arisen that you would like to discuss. Difficulty comes when you don't record problems as they arise, because by the time the one-on-one -on -one meeting comes around, you might have forgotten what that problem was, or you may have already solved it, and then you think it's not really important anymore to discuss in the meeting because it's already been solved. Therefore, for either of those situations, you don't include that problem in the, as a discussion point in the one-on-one -on -one meeting. But this is a mistake, no matter how small or large the problems are, no matter if they are solved or not solved, it's important that you talk to your boss about them. They need to know the challenges that you personally face at work so they can re-establish expectations of you. They also need to be made aware of all problems that happen in a team so they can work on overcoming them and preventing them from happening in the future. They also need to know if you have solved that problem on your own because this will elevate the expectations that they have of you. So it's really important for all of these reasons that you identify the problems and challenges that you face or that you have faced since the last one-on-one -on -one meeting and that you tell your boss about them. And don't forget to think of solutions to these problems and challenges. So if it's a problem or a challenge that you have not solved yet, try to think of a possible solution to that problem. It doesn't have to be the right solution. It doesn't have to be a fantastic solution, but it does show your boss that you've been proactive and you've already started to think about a possible solution to that problem you face. Bosses love to see employees do this because it shows that they are independent thinkers and they're not waiting around relying on their boss to solve all of their problems for them. You also want to include as a discussion point all of your highlights, successes and achievements that you've had since the last one-on-one -on -one meeting. This isn't about you bragging how wonderful you are. It's about helping your boss see the value that you bring to the team and to the company because it's this value that that is the deciding factor in future projects that you get assigned, future promotions and future pay rises too. Essentially, what you need to create is a highlight reel. This is a running document of things you have achieved since your last one-on-one -on -one meeting. This is something you can save in Google Docs or another word processing software, and you should add to it regularly as you have achieved something or had a success at work. It can include highlights about projects you have worked on, challenges you've overcome, or your interpersonal interactions with others at work. So for all of these things, think about where did you excel? How did you add value? What experience did you gain? And write out a detailed list of each notable achievement and include it in your highlight reel. Your highlight reel is also a great resource to look at on days when you are feeling a little bit discouraged or when you're feeling a lack of confidence at work. Once you've done all of this research and thinking, then you need to compile your notes on a document that you take into the one-on-one -on -one meeting. This document could be a simple spreadsheet, a Word document, or a table like what you see on the screen. Personally, I like the table option for the meeting because it helps me see all of the different talking points that I want to include in the meeting. On the top left, I have discussion items. This is where I'd write in items that I want to discuss during the meeting. And this is what we talked about in point three, of this video, so skip back to that section if you need a reminder of what we talked about. On the top right, I have problems and solutions. This is where I would write in problems I have faced since the last one-on-one -on -one meeting and possible solutions that I have come up with for those problems. We talked about this in point four of this video. On the lower left, I have highlights. This is where I include achievements and successes that I want to talk about. We talked about this in point five of the video. 
On the lower right, I have action items. We haven't actually talked about action items in this video, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, it's a place where you can record action items that you must attend to once the one-on-one -on -one meeting is finished. This table is very simple. You can copy this design and make up your own document in Google Docs. Now, if you are having a one-on-one -on -one meeting for a performance review, well, different rules apply. You will need to know what to say in a performance review meeting, and you will need to know what questions to ask your manager in a performance review meeting. These two videos up here will help you with those two things. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot of valuable content from it. If you did like it, please hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this every week to help you as an emerging leader. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.